let me address the nature versus nurture argument, which comes up every time. I fundamentally disagree that it's in our human nature to be aggressive, and here's why. Throughout the entire course of human history, we have lived in scarcity. If you weren't aggressive, you didn't eat. You didn't get what you needed to survive. Mm -hmm. So that has been programmed in just as easily it can be programmed out. For example, if you take a group of children, and I've read reports on this, it was a couple of years back, but it was a social, a, a, a social study, a, a, what's that, uh, anyway, I can't remember the name, psychology, sorry, psychology study. And they took three or four kids, about two years old, they put them in a room and everybody had the same number of toys. Everybody like four of this or four, of this. say there's four, 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 and four of everything. They got along just fine. Everybody had everything, every toy was exactly the same, there were no differences. They made sure that it was a control. Every, you know, that was the control set for the experiment. All the kids got along just fine. Little Johnny, Timmy, Jenny, whatever had, everybody had the same thing. I've got it, you've got it too, well I don't need it, so whatever, they get along fine. Now you take one whole set out to where it's not equal, it's not abundant anymore. It's the abundance issue. Do we have abundance of everything we need in, in the control? Yes, they get along just fine. Take the control and manipulate it. Then you start watching the, sh the stuff fly. I want this. No, I want that. Well, you've got it. Well, I want it. That's where, the ner the, that's where that part of it comes in. If everybody has abundance, the need to behave that way instantly goes away. Which is why the transition, although, although taking more time, is not an instant transition. That would actually be cataclysmic because the human mind isn't... Right now our culture, global culture, isn't prepared to share and be nice. Even though we're taught as kids when we grow up, share and be nice, don't fight. Somehow along the way we get to 12 or 13 and it's me, 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 reach number one, get your trophy, screw everybody else. We kind of transition them from share and be nice to <laughs> selfish bastards. And that's what the majority of the adult population is, is selfish me for my family, my own stuff, giving a hoot about social development or anybody else until something like Haiti happens. So you have Haiti happen, you've got the United States, who is severely economically strapped in most respects, generates a couple of hundred million dollars to help people in a nation they don't even know. We are more prone to be compassionate and sharing than we are to be violent and aggressive and hoarding. The only reason why we display those tendencies is when there's scarcity, when there's not enough and you need it or want it. And so there, there's, that's why it's the argument of nature versus nurture. People confuse what you're taught or educated or programmed to think and be from the time you're born. You're not born a racist, bigot child. You're born a baby completely free of everything and it's your parents, society, what you witness and observe, television, all of those stimulus input that form who you are. Nature would be, am I, gonna, am I prone to breast cancer? Do I have high blood pressure? Genetic issues is nature. Things that are handed down biologically from parent to child. And so that's the argument I have against the idea that people by their nature are greedy and violent. No, but we, are, we educate people to be greedy and violent and we also reinforce it with scarcity to be greedy and violent. As far as how to, how to make this happen or, or what steps that you would go to, for example, one of the things I'm going to work on doing is building these fully automated hydroponic farm systems, but localized, smaller versions for like neighborhoods, 1,000 people, 2,000 people, maximum capacity, and just start putting them all over the place, especially in third world nations if we can get them there. Because if you can get a fully automated robotic facility that just pumps out food every 14 to 15 days, different vegetables, fruits, tomatoes, etc., and they realize, well, wait, aren't you making money? No, I'm a nonprofit. I'm not here to make money. I'm here to provide food, damn it. Uh, I don't need $5, five million dollars in donations to go and buy food for somebody to support some company. I need $5 million to build sustainable systems that I put down and they don't have to touch for 45 years. And it'll constantly punch out the food for them. What that's going to end up doing is start really pissing off the food industry. Yeah. Good, good, because I don't like them either. Why the hell do we have to pay for food? You need it to live to exist, but we have to pay for it. It's retarded. So the first thing to do is start building these little food I guess systems. It beats going out and hunting our own. Uh, yeah, it would. I mean, you don't you don't run the risk then of getting killed by whatever it is you're hunting, or nature, some spider biting you. I'm more than happy to pay for. 
Cheeseburger than 12 and a half to, you know, yeah, I, shoot a deer. Right, but now if, if that food if that food can be just as easily given to you by automated processes, so again, you're not hunting, but you dial it up and it's delivered, and that just keeps your fridge going, and we know how to create as such. Is it yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, there really is no status. I mean, there's who's better than somebody else? That's that's something I'm wearing Prada and you're on Walmart, and so I'm better than you, crap. And that's socially programmed into us from as kids. So that will go away too. All these look at a lot of the negatives. Why do we fight? Why do we bicker? Look at 95 percent of the people in prison are in there for monetarily related crimes, whether it's stealing or. Um, uh, selling drugs, that's a monetary related crime. Things of that nature are monetary related crimes. I'm afraid we need to start thinking yeah. about that. Sorry. I, I, I just wanted to respond to what this gentleman said. Uh, a lot of studies have shown that the rich people and the poor people in more equal societies are both happier than in a society that is so greatly exaggerated as ours. Mm -hmm. Scandinavian societies regularly uh, are shown as happier yeah. because there's not yeah. this big gap. In America, we have the highest stress, we have the highest crime rate, yes. we have the highest infant mortality rate, we have all these, we're the richest nation on the planet, yet we've got all this- The worst problems. Problems, why? The stratification is completely ridiculous. Mm -hmm. and it, it we may have the worst problems, but there's a whole lot more people want to come here than people want to leave. Because of the illusion of freedom to do what you want to do, which in and of itself is also slightly bogus. You're only as free to do what you can afford. You're not I as wonder how many people who immigrated to the United States in the 20s from Ireland have actually gone back. It's not about going they, back. They, they like stay. it here. They, I'm sure they do. It's, it's not about... I'm all red, white, and blue to a point, but there's also a lot of red, white, and black in what we've done in our history to yes. screw other nations and keep ourselves propped up at the expense of others that I am not happy about. Yes, sir. Douglas, I think this is the most interesting damn thing I've heard since. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard about people. I've heard about people. I've heard about people. Do you guys ever get together like in Houston? And yes, we do have a Houston, Houston chapter. Um, we get together at the first Saturday of every month and uh, I can ha I've got a boatload of business cards I brought just so you guys could reach me if you're interested and I can give you the links and stuff to, to that. We meet the first Saturday of every month. Uh, it's the Zeitgeist Houston chapter. Um, we just had Z Day, which is a global event. We've got about 400,000 members, a little over 400,000 people around the world. The, the movement's been around for just a little over a year and two months. We have 400,000 people. The Zeitgeist event that was in uh, New York, which was the headquarter, kind of, I guess you want to say the biggest one, had about 2,000 people there. We had about 30 to 40 people at ours, but we just started our Houston chapter literally a month ago. So we only had about 40 people there. Um, it was everywhere. Europe is way more interested in this than America. We all of us believe the United States will be the hardest culture to even think about it because. Sure. Our society, we're rich, we're special, we invented capitalism, we did all this, we do all that, completely ignoring all of the other crap that comes with it and the negatives and the drawbacks. And so, and, and how other nations around the world are constantly uh, paralyzed by what the United States does. And so they're all for anything that kind of knocks us down a peg, I guess you could say. But I don't think it's about knocking down pegs, I think it's about bringing everybody up. I, this, the rich people are... The, the, the rich people are going to live even better than they are now. They have some of these fancy toys and stuff, but even they have their own limitations that are self-imposed. Everybody would have access to the best of everything. It's not unrealistic to produce it. It's not unrealistic to distribute it. It's not unrealistic, and nobody controls it. There is no person. It's self-regulating society by society, which we've never been able to do before because global communication didn't exist to make it happen. That's the difference. Yay. Thank you. I'll slide off. Yeah.